it's great stuff. You know, it's free PR for the space program. It's wonderful. And it seems that they're, uh, I think the funding issue will uh, solve itself out within the next few years because there's a lot of stuff going on nowadays, oh. it seems like. Uh, yeah. The the uh, the new rover that they have oh, there on goodness. Mars, the yes. camera on that thing is incredible. You know, I posted something on Facebook kind of joking around when because they actually came up with a video of the landing from the actual yeah, spacecraft. Yeah, that. And the thing is, is crystal clear, and I'm saying we, we, we still can't get a good video of a guy robbing a convenience <laughs> store, but here we are, Mars, umpteen million miles away, and we're getting crystal clear photos of this stuff. Uh, it's it's just amazing to me. Now, I, I sit in front of the computer and watch this. You know, the geek I am, I'm like drooling all over my keyboard. You know, it's like, but, but the public likes that. They, yeah. they might not understand the science behind it or might not even be interested in the science behind it but but the photographs same thing with the Hubble Space Telescope people love the photos and the visuals because I mean they're real but they're they're almost artistic so yeah. even if they don't really care about the science behind it there's still an attraction of stuff like you know the Mars landings and 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 stuff with the Hubble Space Telescope and, and things like that so the public still loves that it's great. Yeah, and, and I think that the public's going to get a lot more interested within the next few years because I'm not sure exactly what like what has started the whole space thing, go to Mars yeah. and do all this. Like this sh- they have shuttles now that apparently are going to be going to space that people can pay so much for. And yeah. what's uh, really crazy that I seen yesterday is they're going to have a space hotel. Did you see that? I saw that. In 2027? That and, uh, yeah. Six I, years from I, now. I saw that. And, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Apparently, they're going to have Apparently, yes. they're going to have cinemas, bars. It's going to be it accommodates I think 400 people, something like yeah. that. And they're going to start construction in 2025 supposedly and then have it all done right, by 20, 2027. 20, yeah. 2 years. You know when I was when I was a little kid, 5 and 6 years old, that that was the whole thing. The future is going to be these space stations that are kind of round like wheels and you kind of make them that way because when you rotate them you can then create an artificial gravity field so you can do do things somewhat normal. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that was 60 years ago we were talking about this kind of stuff. So so who knows? I mean, the, the idea is cool. It's great. I, I'd love to see it. The money is trying to put that. That's, yeah. That could be the issue. See, I, I think that that's going to change, though, with these crazy billionaires that you have nowadays, especially, you know, Elon, Elon Musk is the oh, big one yeah. with SpaceX and the whole – he wants to be the first person to die on Mars, yeah. apparently, or something like that. So whenever you have these people that don't have to rely on the government for funding or anything yeah. like that, you may actually start seeing a lot of advances. And, you know, until recently, honestly, I was not a big fan of the the – privatization of of space flight you know because i remember growing up during the you know going to the moon and nasa and it took literally six hundred thousand people to uh to get to the moon and an incredible amount of money um and and to me the private sector didn't have that kind of money but but elon's changed my mind about that i think um you know i i think he's doing a good thing and and i think he's part of the uh the reason that the public is now interested in space again and, and just watching, you know, watching the, the his rockets go, and then they land again the way rockets used to land in science fiction movies back in the 50s and 60s when I was a kid. They, they land upright on these platforms. It's like, wow, this is just really cool stuff. Yeah, it, it really is. And I think that, you know, that will be the future. It That's will something be. like my, I don't know if my kids or at least my great grandkids will be able to spend a weekend up in space on Mars if they want to. Yeah, Someplace, yeah. Uh, and but but it's kind of scary too, like the the how they're putting so much work and money and time into the whole Mars thing because yeah. like you know why are they wanting to leave Earth so bad? Yeah. Almost is what you start thinking. Like what's yeah. going on here that they have that they're thinking of this Plan B so yeah. much here recently. Well, you know, when, when you when you look at it in in reality, most people don't don't think of these things. The the Earth is it's a spaceship. Yeah. And at some point in time, spaceships run out of room for their travelers and they run out of supplies. I mean, no matter how much you recycle, replant trees, do this, do that, whatever, at some point you run out of of what you need to survive someplace. In theory, at least, Mars is the only planet that we possibly could could live on. It's it's different than Earth, but it's it's more closely resembles Earth than any other planet as far as 
uh, temperature, uh, atmosphere, uh, things of that nature. You, you'd have to change things around a little bit, something called terraforming, and that may or may not be possible. But, you know, and, you know, we're not talking any time now. This might be 400 years from now, but at yeah. some point the Earth will run out of all of its resources, or no, no matter how much you, you try to conserve them. It's a spaceship. You run out. Now, that's the way it is. Uh, so Mars is the only logical choice in our solar system as of this point in time. Now, there's a lot of problems. Uh, you know, your atmospheric pressure is different. Your gravity is different. Your temperatures are different. You know, on Mars, you have a limited area where you could live. So let's say we're talking uh, temperature-wise. So on the equator region on Mars, on a nice warm summer day, it does get to be about 75 or degrees or so. But at night in the summer, you're still talking zero degrees on the equator. So you're kind of yeah. limited on your, your geographic area where you could actually live on Mars. In the wintertime, obviously, temperatures are much colder than that. You then have to find a way to create an atmosphere that, that humans can live in, but the gravity on Mars is about half of that. So at some point, it's probably going to float away. That's probably what happened to the water on Mars. There was water there millions of years ago. So there's a lot of things you have to go through to make a planet like that livable. Mm -hmm. And and that alone, if you started today terraforming, you know, changing it around so that you could make Mars into an Earth, if you started today, that still might take 150, 200 years to do. Yeah. So it's it's complicated. Um, it, it is. We believe it's possible. Uh, but I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, when you know, in 1965, landing on the moon was impossible, and four years later, we were there. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it really is crazy. I mean, and I think that we will get it. It, it could be even faster than 200 years because this yeah. technology nowadays is just advancing oh. so quickly that it's almost impossible to wrap our minds around what will be here in the next five years, it's, let it's, alone 200. Technology is is exploding. Let, let me tell you, I, I, I just got a new cell phone. My wife and I just got new cell phones a month ago. I'll, I'll be dead before I figure out how to operate half the <laughs> stuff on it. It, it. It's a whole new learning curve, even just from the phone I got three years ago that yeah. Technology developed that that much of what things can do. The computer industry, it, it's it's hard to keep up with. It really is. Yeah, and these kids nowadays. See, I, I'm kind of jealous because I, I I was born in '96, so I was still I, I grew up how kids should. Yeah. Outside playing soldiers, yeah. cops, and robbers, cowboys, and right. whatever. Yeah. But my nephew nowadays, he's. I think he's eight. Pretty sure I'm a bad uncle. Anyways, <laughs> uh, he he is so focused in this oh. technology nowadays. I mean, he's building his own fans. He's oh, like know. rebuilding computers and yeah. stuff at the time whenever I was still chewing on Legos. Yeah, that's you know, right. and he's not the only kid that's going to be growing up that way. So whenever you have a, kids that are growing up in this advanced era, then you're really like, now what's the future going to be like? Yeah. Yeah, because because the, these these kids now and and the teenagers now, people even people in their twenties, they, they want things faster and faster and faster. So 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 the technology has to keep up with the wants and needs of of what's there. You know, when I grew up in the late fifties and early sixties, uh, technology, uh, dial phones, party lines, uh, you know, uh, didn't even have electric typewriters at the start of of, of me yeah. growing up. You know. Um, you know, so so the technology w was a slower pace, R really, un until we started with the moon landings and technology started speeding up because we needed that to get there. And then after that, everything just totally took off with the, with the, with the space age, so to speak. Yeah. And now it's just progressing at a rate that each year the technology changes. It's it's crazy. Yeah, so many people want to blame it on aliens or something like that. <laughs> but I, I, I seriously think it's, it's just because of communication. I, I was thinking about that uh, here recently. You know, yet you telephones, especially the internet nowadays, oh, my goodness. sharing information, sharing ideas, working on projects, not even have to be in the same room. I think that's why you have so much advanced technology. I, I remember the the internet. I don't even know if it was called the internet then when it first started, and you did. There was no such things. Uh, let me think. I could even narrow this down. 1995, 19, I'm sorry, 1989, 1990, when, when you didn't even have things like websites. Uh, I remember trying to get information from the National Weather Service, and you would take the receiver on your phone, you, you would actually put it on this thing that almost looked like a speaker, and you would type in the phone number. There were no such things as websites. And, and, and monitors back then were, were black and white or, or yellow and white. Yeah. There was no visuals, no visuals at all. There was no such thing as visuals with, with the Internet back then. I mean, it wasn't even called that. Um, and, and that was it. You could only get written stuff. 
You, wow. you couldn't do any of that. And I remember, like I say, 1980, 88, 89, that's what I was doing when I was trying to get weather information. Well, you, you, you dial the phone number, put the phone on this crazy looking receiver thing, and these words and numbers would come across the screen. No graphics. That was it. And even then, that's only 40 years ago. It, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't that long back. You know? Exactly. So it's, uh, it's, it's uh, 89, 90, and then all of a sudden it... Um, it exploded. Yeah. It is a crazy yeah. time to be alive. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. So, so what do you think is going to like, what, what do you see as the future of space? Do you see like Mars as being the future or like the, when it, whenever it comes to what they are trying to accomplish, like how in the sixties it was the moon the landing. Moon. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the next big venture for I, I, space? I think Mars will be the next one if we could solve some of the problems. We also have to have to solve the problems of getting there a lot quicker. You're talking with technology now. It's about a nine, eight, eight to ten month trip to Mars when Mars and Earth are at their closest points. And that still creates a lot of problems uh, medically and biologically with humans being in space that long. Um, yeah. I, I seen like yeah. where they would have to like keep exercising so their bone density doesn't go down. You, you and, get bone loss, uh, organs shift inside the body, the blood see, yeah, doesn't pump I, as quickly. Yeah, space. I didn't know yeah. that uh, until I talked to you last time yeah. that the organs will actually shift around yeah. inside the body while yeah. you're in space. That is Yeah, I remember you're in, you're in, you know, zero G, things naturally float around and that's why when astronauts come back even from just a couple of months in space, they They've got some stomach issues while things settle in, you know, settle back to normal. Uh, you, you know, the, the bone loss, you're not going to get back again. Uh, you, you come back to Earth, of course, and after you've been floating around in weightlessness where, you know, you weigh about as much as this piece of paper, now all of a sudden you're walking around on Earth and you, you're, you're trying to walk under your own weight of 200 pounds or so. It's difficult. Everything it changes a lot. So if we could find a way to get to Mars within about a month or so, as opposed to a nine month trip, it'll solve a lot of problems, uh, specifically with the human body and biology and medical issues. Cause there always, there's always medical issues when, when astronauts go into space once, I mean, even, even the first three or four days they're up in space. Yeah. Uh, the issues of constant nausea, vomiting because, because of disorientation, things floating around mm -hmm. in there. So, so even if astronauts are only in space for, let's say, a couple of weeks, first three or four days, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. terrible for them. Have they worked out the uh, – because I've seen where whenever, whenever they're going to do the whole Mars X mission, that it was going to be a one-way trip. The yeah. people that go on this trip, it is they're going to Mars, That's you're it. never going to come back. That's is it. it still that way today? It, it pretty much is because if you think of that time frame, so if, if you're taking nine months to get there – and nine months to get back. It's already 18 months, but in order to keep that nine month time frame, you have to wait for Earth and Mars to get back in their right positions again. Otherwise, the time to come to, to go there or back would be double. So, you know, you're talking nine months there, then you might have to wait a year or so, then another nine months back. So you're talking significant amount of time going there and then coming back again. Uh, humans probably will not last uh, that mm. much time. And they might not even last that long on, on Mars. Um, uh, my, my friend Heidi DeBlock up in Albany, uh, she, she's a, a surgeon up there, but she also was, she's a heart surgeon, but she was the surgeon for NASA for about 15 years that examined the astronauts before they went up into space and then examined them when they came back. And she has documentation. We're not talking opinion. We're talking actual medical documentation of what happens to the heart, the kidneys, the eyes, the brain, the lungs, all this stuff. And... I'd it's say not it's a devastating. Good thing. Yeah, and you know, I, I wish she lived closer to here. You know, she's up in Albany, New York, because she she does a lot of talks for schools and astronomy organizations up in New York, in that area. And she does this talk called "Do We Have the Heart to Go to Mars?" And she puts all this stuff on a PowerPoint screen, documentation of what happens to the body. It's not pretty. Yeah. 